in case you feel that uh, I'm not audible, there's issue with network connectivity, kindly inform me. All right. Okay, so uh, uh, just inform me, all right? We'll continue with the previous lecture regarding uh, the transport layer. We started with the transport layer. We saw what transport layer is, what is its functions. We briefly did the function. We briefly did the protocols that are covered within it. And then after that, we studied about multiplexing and demultiplexing in the previous class. Then we saw what UDP is connection less service and also we saw the UDP segment structure in our today's class we will start with the reliable data transfer okay so basically what is reliable data transfer what is reliability here we want to ensure that if I am saying something to you okay you have received that so, uh, how do I ensure that what I, what I have said, you have received it? I message you. I broadcast a message like, guys, do you hear me? Like, for example, just now. Ramanand. Ramanand, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Okay, good. So, exactly, this is the same thing that the reliable data transfer does. When it sends something, okay, it waits for the acknowledgement of the receiver to see whether it has received or not. When the receiver sends back an acknowledgement, yes, I have received it, it means it's a reliable data transfer. As compared to the previous one which we did in UDP, we said it's not reliable, but it's used for multimedia applications in which you just keep on saying, like you are listening to a lecture on TV okay you cannot respond back to it you are you are just on the receiving end okay you are just on the receiving end so in that case you have no you know you cap no capability in which you can reply back and say to them that yes I have received or not this is what reliability here is. Now we know TCP actually implements this reliable data transfer, but we are not as of now starting TCP. We'll first study what is reliability here. And to understand what this liability is, we have two things here. One is the sender, another is the receiver. So we have a connection between the sender and the receiver. Sender sends the first packet that is PKT0. Send is the instruction of sending this packet. So it sends it and the receiver here RCV is the receive packet 0. It received the packet 0. Now until the receiver replies back and says that I have received the acknowledgement, it will not send the next packet. So, sender is waiting here. During this time, sender is doing nothing. Then what is it doing? It is waiting for the acknowledgement. Receiver prepares an acknowledgement and sends back an acknowledgement. It's ACK0. That is acknowledgement for packet number 0. It receives back acknowledgement 0. Right? So after it has received this acknowledgement, the sender sends the next packet. So receiver receives the packet, sends the acknowledgement of that packet. Once the sender gets the acknowledgement of that packet, it prepares the next packet and so on. This is how it will keep on going. 
this is how it will keep on going next 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 but this situation is an ideal situation in which there is no loss there is no loss compared to this let's say this is a link with negligible loss like a fiber compared to this if we see a link which is lossy link the sender sends the packet here packet 0 the receiver receives this packet 0 and sends an acknowledgement of packet 0 the sender gets this packet 0 fine this is okay till now it is the same like we saw here but now next thing is sender sends the packet 1 it is lost how it is lost there are lots of you know communication errors which we have discussed in our previous class classes and somehow this packet is not received by the receiver in this case what happens is the sender would wait for some time obviously receiver cannot reply back it cannot say i have not received receiver cannot say that send again until it is sure that the sender has sent something so what happens here is sender waits for some time this certain amount of time here is known as time out that is this part this is the time during which the sender expects that in case it was received by the receiver a reply should have come back however we know it's lost plus some more time in case there was a delay in the packet it considers that also delay from uh, the receiver and also in sending the acknowledgement it considers that also after this is done time out it now is sure that no i am not getting any acknowledgement back what it does it prepares the next pa uh, this packet once again so the send packet that was sent here is within the buffer it sends it again and this time it was received it receives it sends the acknowledgement back then the next packet and so on this is what happens in case we have a packet loss there can be another situation as well in which the sender sends the packet the receiver receives the packet sends the acknowledgement back the sender sends back the packet and the receiver receives it till now it is fine everything is okay but instead of a packet getting lost we have an acknowledgement getting lost so acknowledgement loss means that the sender again would be waiting for a certain amount of time in which it expects the packet to be received so we would have to wait for a certain time out so sender doesn't know whether it was the packet that was lost or whether it was the acknowledgement was the loss it's waiting for the acknowledgement even if it's packet lost even if it's acknowledgement lost the sender would wait for that specific amount of time during which it expects that the receiver would send back the acknowledgement then what it would send packet one again but the receiver has already received this packet so it detects that there is a duplicate packet so it neglects the uh, duplicate packet but sends the acknowledgement here that is this one this time acknowledgement went far uh, okay it was received by the sender and this is how it will continue this is in case of acknowledgement loss the fourth condition which we call as premature time out or delayed acknowledgement in the case first the sender sends it she received it sender sends the acknowledgement acknowledgement was received but the next packet that was sent okay acknowledgement took time to come back we had a premature time out we it did not receive by the reply by then 
then what happened acknowledgement was sent and the sender received the acknowledgement here but before the acknowledgement was received time out had happened what we call as premature time out packet was sent once again here this packet was sent again here once more and the acknowledgement came after it you can see here acknowledgement is reaching after this packet was sent so what happens in this case in this case we have here a duplicate detected by the receiver it sends the acknowledgement once again that is here as well as you know acknowledgement was received here what uh, it uh, the, the sender prepared the next packet so received a duplicate acknowledgement after the second one let me just clear it up so let's see here since time out happened here next packet was sent here but it received acknowledgement late so receiving acknowledgement means that packet 1 was received successfully it prepares the next packet and sends the next packet that we see here but during this time there was duplicate detected by receiver it sent another acknowledgement for already received the receiver uh, sends this acknowledgement one and the sender receives this acknowledgement but it has already received this acknowledgement where here so what it does it deletes this or ignores it because it knows that i have already received this thing I have already received the packet and this is how the uh, you know reliable data transfer works this is how we have the acknowledgements sent across there are different protocols which we will come across to understand the uh, operation of this among them we have stop and wait and other protocol going through each one back and and, and select you repeat before i actually move on to these protocols which are mentioned here let us have the overview of the next thing that is tcp that is transmission control protocol this is what we call as connection oriented protocol connection oriented transport layer protocol so before the sender and the receiver start the transmission before actually the sender would send the actual data the sender does a handshake with the other connection what i mean by handshake here ramnan can you hear me Uh, Ramanand, I want to send the file to you. Can you take the file? Okay. The next thing I am sending is the file. So this was an example. Uh, Ramanand, I am not sending any file. <laughs> so this was an example that before I actually was giving. Uh, actually, I was going to give a file to Ramanand. I confirmed from Ramanand. are you okay are you able to receive the file are you active right do you have the capacity to receive is there any issue from your end you cannot receive he said no i can receive i am fine with it so i said fine once i got his acknowledgement i again told him okay next thing that i will be sending you would be the actual file this thing in which i first ask him he replies back then i confirm with him 
This is known as three-way handshake. And exactly the similar thing happens in computer networks in which the two end systems handshake with each other. Obviously, it's not a physical handshake. It's like sending off message packets across. And you tell each other, you tell each other that yes, we have received no, I mean, I'm able to communicate or not. And again, since TCP is a transport layer protocol, it is available in end systems. So we expect that no other intermediate devices like a switch, like a router would be able to understand this protocol. That's why the protocols of transport layer and above are known as end-to-end -end protocols. They are available in end systems. Likewise, TCP is a handshake between two end systems. So if I am connected with your, uh, you know, laptop, okay, it means that no other intermediate device is able to understand this TCP protocol. And when I have sent something, Ramanand replied back to me, uh, it is a full duplex transfer. TCP is a full duplex data transfer. We had bi-directional data flow in the same connection and we could have the maximum transfer of the data using each segment which we call as MSS that is max maximum segment size and what is this maximum segment size we will try to have this maximum segment size as per the lower layer protocols so what we, what what i mean by lower layer protocols remember mtu data link layer as well as network layer what was MTU? MTU was maximum transfer unit. That's how much was the maximum I could carry. Let's say 1500 bytes that we discussed. So likewise, we would have here MSS, that is the maximum segment size, how much we can have. And we will try to have it in such a way that we do not go beyond the maximum size that is prescribed by the lower layers, that is the network layer and the data link layer. If we get a large chunk of data from the application, we break it using segmentation at transport layer. If network layer gets a bigger segment size from transport layer, network layer does fragmentation. If transport layer, if data link layer gets a bigger chunk from the higher layer, it will do accordingly framing so that we keep on the maximum trans at uh, this size max mtu or mss that's the maximum segment size another thing that we have to understand in tcp the first point that is given here that it is a point to point point to point protocol one is the p2p that we understood that we did in uh, the physical connections that was the topology that we did but in this case, we are not talking about the topologies, the physical one. We are talking about point-to-point -point connectivity. That is, if we want to have a, a connection-oriented transport, if we want to have TCP, it, it is between one sender and it is between one receiver. Which makes something interesting here, that we cannot have we cannot have, you know, broadcasting in TCP. We cannot have multicasting in TCP. We'll expect only the one-to-one -one connection, one sender and one receiver. Why? Because of the reliable transfer, because of the handshake, because of the acknowledgements and so on, and retransmissions, we would want to have TCP as point-to-point. -point that's mentioned here as well the next thing is that tcp is in order delivery what we mean by in order delivery let me draw a picture here let's say this is the sender this is the receiver in between we have some more devices let's say a router i'll connect these if we first talk about UDP, okay, 
in udp the packets that are sent across can be unordered so if this is my first packet second packet third packet fourth packet so this is one two three four <coughs> this is how packets are generated and this is how a receiver can receive now since internet we have you know a lot of routers in between there can be a packet okay let's say packet number 1 which has been directly sent across here through this link but because of some issue within the router or within some of the link second packet was sent through this route okay and the third packet took direct route what do we see here this is the route for first packet this is the route for second packet because of during that time there was some issue with the router the link was busy it took an alternate route and this is the third router third switch packet in udp what happened here in that case the packets that arrived here was first number 1 what was the next packet that came number 3 then came number 2 why because three came directly it had a shorter route so it took lesser time two had a longer route it took long time so the delivery here then let's say we got four and so on so what do we see here we see that the delivery of packets that was done here was not in sequence and what do we mean by was not in sequence here it means that it was unordered it was unordered delivery why because three came before two and then what was to be done by the transport layer at the receiving end it had to order them it had to keep them one by one again back now coming to tcp here tcp is providing us an order delivery of packets let's say this is the link these are the routers and so on now in the case we have packets here 1 2 3 4 5 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 packet 1 packet 1 takes a shorter route let's say here and reaches here packet 2 takes a bit of longer route and reaches here why because during that time maybe the this path was busy you have done this in routing and then we have packet 3 packet 3 takes again a shorter route so in what order would we get packets here that we need to see so we will have these packets reaching here in an order in which we have let's say 1 2 3 this is what we explain in tcp but uh, sorry udp but in case of tcp in such a situation we cannot accept packets which are out of order as of now as of now then you'll see that we we'll use different flow control protocols we'll see how we can take uh, some packets in chunks as of now keep this in mind that we would need in order delivery of packets why because once one is sent across we would expect that there is to be given acknowledgement of one let's see here
So what do we expect here? So this is the sender, this is the receiver. In this case, we expect if one packet is sent here, this is the first packet, send the acknowledgement back of one. The next packet is sent. Send the acknowledgement back of next packet. Then we have third packet. Send back the acknowledgement of third packet. So it is necessary that we get packets as one, then two, and then three, and then so on. That we say we would need to have in order delivery for TCP. Okay, so we got some points here. The next thing is, which I just now mentioned that it won't be possible in multicasting to have TCP. It won't be pos possible to have, uh, you know, TCP in broadcasting. Simple, we can say, two is a company, three is a crowd. It cannot be maintained within three acknowledgements and so on, there will be a lot of confusion. That's why we have uh, TCP working in point-to-point -point protocol. MSS, we just now mentioned it, MSS is the maximum amount of data that can be grabbed and placed uh, in a segment. This is limited by the MSS. The common values that we see within MSS, the maximum is 1500. The lower one is 536, 512 bytes and so on. And again, I repeat, the segment size is often chosen such that you ensure that it is the MTU of network layer. You do not want to do IP fragmentation. That's why you will ensure that uh, you keep the same size. Okay, let us now see the segment size, uh, the segment structure of TCP. Remember the segment structure of UDP? It was pretty simple to remember because we had a pivot and we had a small header. How much we said was the header size of UDP? 8 bytes. Okay, how much now do we have the header size of TCP that is this green square that I have drawn this is 20 bytes so the difference of 12 bytes we will see why do we have that many another thing that we saw in UDP there were just four fields within the header the source port and the destination port we see them here as well and there were two more things one was length another one was checksum this part that we have down here, this is the application. This is simply what we get from the application. This is simply what we have the data. This is the message that we have to pass on. So what other things do we see other than the length and the checksum here? The port number remains the, uh, the size of the port uh, remains same. The source port number for 16 bit and the destination port number again 16 bit total that's mentioned here as 32 then we have some things which is sequence number and acknowledgement number what is the sequence number and acknowledgement both of them are 32 bit fields this is 32 bit sequence number and 32 bit acknowledgement number actually tcp sender and receiver implements reliable data transfer service using this sequence number and acknowledgement number. Like you give the sequence number to the packet that you are sending across and you expect an acknowledgement to that packet so you would have an acknowledgement number for the packet. And to inform the sender and receiver about is this packet uh, uh, a, a data packet or is this packet actually a, a you know an acknowledgement of it for that 
there are specific fields which are mentioned below here so down there you can see application data this is the data that is to be sent checksum this is the same that we had uh, in udp and this is the same internet checksum which we did while we are discussing error uh, when we discussed about when we discussed about a crc and there we i mentioned that there is the third one which is internet checksum the video of which you might have seen and also i told you that this is implemented in in, in passport layer we saw it in udp now we have similar to this here as well the tcp till field is of variable length and uh, this why we say optional this may be used this can be to negotiate uh, certain things between sender and receiver an example of negotiation of uh, mss that is the maximum segment size sender and receiver discuss between each other how much should be the maximum segment size this is an example of that okay and uh, we have certain fields which are mentioned here as uh, certain fields within the header to start with you can see this one is header length this is a four bit field which informs how how big is the header obviously the size would change because there are some fields which are of variable length so in order to inform how much is the header length this field is used which is of four bit then we have certain fields in which we have one of them as a then we have rst let me see if yeah. okay like we have here a this is known as acknowledgement bit ack bit and what is this each the c e u a p r s f this each of them are of one bit each so they basically uh, they would denote just 0 and 1 it's a flag indicating whether it's on or off so if we have a on as one we will expect that this segment that is been sent across is actually an acknowledgement for a packet if if the value that is carried uh, inside the acknowledgement ack field is valid it indicates that it's an acknowledgement we have rsf that is mentioned here as rst syn fin these are basically for synchronization reset and uh, this is uh, what we know as connection setup and connection tear down so connection management is done by these bits okay then we have this receive window which is mentioned here it's a 16 bit receive window that is here 16 bit receive window we'll understand this more when we do flow control so this is used for flow control in which we would have to inform the receiver okay whether it's willing to accept these many more and so on some other bits like we have here that is c e you can see here this u here this one this u is an urgent bit if it's you know uh, if it's valid if it's on it means that this packet is to be treated urgently all right it, uh, it should have uh, the minimum delay there another one that we have here is p this one okay this p is uh, basically psh bit this indicates that the receiver should pass the data to the uh, upper layer immediately okay 
so this is basically how the tcp segment structure looks like and among this we know this much or let me see this much is the header this much is the header okay here it is giving an example of how we sent and receive these sequence numbers you have sent a sequence number of a packet you expect an acknowledgement number of uh, it can be this packet or it can be the other packet so an example of sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers as given in telnet okay this is an example of telnet telnet is rfc 854 telnet runs on tcp basically okay in this if an acknowledgement is carried in the segment carrying the data this is known as a piggy act what do we see here host a and host b okay a user types certain thing, a user types c here c is sent across with the sequence number 42 acknowledgement 79 and data is c host acknowledges the receipt of c and echoes back c it says yes i have received back c and in this it changes the sequence number in the reply as the acknowledgement number that was sent by the sender that is we see here 79 see this 79 so the acknowledgement sent by the sender in the packet is changed as sequence number and it acknowledges for the packet number 43 and what does it mean it means that i have received the sequence number 42 and i am expecting the uh, the next packet as 43 that's why then the host sends 43 here so see this here 42, 42 sequence number is sent let's say uh, 70 79 it's sends back the next one as it. now the question is how to set this tcp timeout if you remember if you go back a bit we had seen a tcp timeout here between sender and receiver so how do we set this tcp timeout how do we keep this in mind the, <coughs> the tcp timeout is kept in such a way that it should not premature before you get back the reply what it means it means that it should wait as much of time as it thinks that packet would take keeping in mind the maximum amount of time it should take also it should keep in mind that maybe there are some delays that a packet faces while it is sent from sender to receiver also some delays that would take by uh, that would be taken by the receiver in processing of this packet and also keep in mind that there will be some delays which may be faced by the acknowledgement while it's sent from the receiver back to the sender so premature should not be that short and premature uh, and tcp timeout should not be that large also that you keep on only waiting and waiting and waiting till you know there is no acknowledgement comes packet has already been lost but you are still waiting for it waiting for it that wastes the time so we would require that time out is set it's an important thing keep that this in mind how do you set up this time out <coughs> you set up this time out in such a way so that it's not too long 
think that you are waiting for the acknowledgement nothing is coming packet is lost or acknowledgement is lost but you are waiting 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 it wastes lot of time and it should no it should not be too short that you do premature time out and then after that the acknowledgement comes but you had already sent the packet again so you had done unnecessary retransmissions so you need to set up the tcp round trip times in such a way that it is the best one is an examples of the same thing that has been you know so what do we get as of now let me go back so what do we get from this tcp protocol that we just now understood we understood certain points in tcp in today's lecture the first one is it is a reliable how did we get this reliability we got the reliability because we sent a packet and we confirmed whether packet was received or not the second one was it was ordered we sent a first packet we received the acknowledgement first packet then we sent the next next acknowledgement then we third and acknowledgement so we went in order of 1 2 3 4 and also in the header there was one of the field which is checksum not just that packet is received and confirmed i have received it like i was planning to send a file to ramanand so now i have sent the file to ramanand ramanand received it everything was done perfectly first three way handshake then transfer then acknowledgements and ramanand said yes sir i have received the file i confirm okay this is the end of the data transmission fine so ramanand received it it was reliable data transfer but was the file that was received uh, by him completely received as in the case maybe there were some errors within the file the packet was received the segment was received but with errors so we have a mechanism for it which is error checking so we have error checked delivery here how we have internet checksum that would take care of the errors that would see whether the data has been received correctly or not so let's see an example of tcp where do you see this tcp well most of the important communications that require reliable delivery correction oriented services work on tcp typically www the world wide web email services that you use uh, remote admis uh, administration like telnet it is telnet uh, what we'll mention it as a remote administration this is based on tcp file transfer ftp and so on they are all based on tcp so tcp solves our problem of lost packets also duplicate packets also out of delivery packets also and also tcp helps us in minimizing network congestion <coughs> we'll see flow control to understand this tcp has its own level of abstraction it it, it covers the underlying network delays does care about what network layer uh, you know tender doesn't care what network layer and others does because tcp or let's say transport layer protocol does the abstraction of underlying network delays and tcp is optimized for accurate delivery rather than timely delivery so if we have tcp it's accurate as compared to udp if it's udp we say timely here we do not in tcp we do not emphasize on timely delivery we say let it take time but i want to ensure it is error free and i have a complete file but udp says no even if there are some issues with it even if there are some packet losses send me 
on time i want it on time it uh, mm -hmm. All right, so I would want you to go and understand completely the segment structure here that we have discussed today. Okay, let me go back. I want you to go ahead and understand this very well. Well, source port number, destination port number, we understood this. We understood the data below. So whatever is left in between, starting from sequence numbers, starting from flags and so on. Okay. As an example here, there are flags here, S, uh, Sync, Fin, and RST. Keep this in mind. If the Sync flag is set, <coughs> what I mean by set, means if S here, let me annotate it. If S here, okay, is set, means it is 1. This is the initial sequence number, the sequence number of the actual first data byte and the acknowledgement number in the corresponding acknowledgement are then this sequence number plus one. That's how it will go ahead. Now, if the sequence flag is clear, not set, means zero, then we say this is an accumulated sequence number of the first data byte of the segment, typically for this current session. Likewise, we have acknowledgement here here and what is this acknowledgement number we have a 32 bit acknowledgement number above this a if the acknowledgement flag is set this ack or this a is set then the value of this field is the next sequence number that the sender of the acknowledgement is expecting. So acknowledgement number's value would be, I'm talking about this. The value of this would be the next sequence number that the sender is expecting. That's why I said you go back, revise this. I want you to understand this so that it is easier for me to go ahead with the flow control. Header length, I already mentioned what it is. You can call it as uh, data offset also. It's a 4-bit size. And what is its purpose? Its purpose is to give the size of the TCP header. It will give in a 32-bit word. The main size of the header here is 5 words. The maximum size is 15 words. Which in other word means the minimum size that we will have of this header that is the TCP header minimum is 20 bits which is 5 words and the maximum that we have here is 60 bytes which corresponds to the 15 words Alright, so 60 bytes is the maximum size that we have. Now, if we have 60 bytes here, what was the 40 bytes we used it for? This won't change, this remains the same, the size, the size here same, all this remains same, except one thing that is what options that is variable length this means that in other words options field here can have a size of how much 40 bytes plus the 20 of the remaining here makes as a maximum of 60 bytes but typically if question is answered what is the size of tcp header keep in mind it is kept to be 20 okay and what is the size of UDP header it is 8 bytes another thing that is somewhere here is not used there's a difference between options and not used option is basically 
if you want to negotiate between sender and receiver on certain uh, protocol like uh, certain things like maximum segment size okay or there is some other protocol that between sender and receiver you want to negotiate you can use options field but not used has been kept empty and it has been kept for future use in case you want to set some other flags newer things come in tcp then this reserved bits reserved 3 bits can be used the bits here the six uh, flag, the nine flag bits that we have here they are known as control bits 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 here these are known as control bits the flag bits the nine control bits which include urgent ack acknowledgement psh as push function rst as reset the connection syn as synchronize sequence number fin that is the last packet from the sender when it's set means that i am going to end this is my last one. the window size the receive window we'll study this when we'll go for flow control and we'll also study it in window scaling the checksum you already studied in the previous one just a revision of it checksum is a 16 bit field and we use it for error checking of the header and the payload and pseudo header as well and what is a pseudo header some books like might mention here that error checking is to be done on the header here that is mentioned here this on the payload that is this application data and a pseudo header what is a pseudo header a pseudo header consists of source ip address means network layer the destination ip address the protocol number for the tcp protocol that is 0 cross 0006 and the length of the tcp header including the pay payload that is in bytes so to do a proper check setting a pseudo header is to be included why we call as pseudo header because pseudo is because it's not actually part of the tcp it is part of the ip header the source ip address the destination ip address the protocol number that we had the glue between the two protocol these two uh, layers these constitute a pseudo header and to do a proper checksumming we should have pseudo header included with payload as well as header of tcp what are these pseudo headers these are some of the important parts of ip headers that we require that's why checksumming is done on this i hope this is clear any questions ramanan any questions okay there is the last part uh, before or i actually go on there is some part which is known as padding as well and what is that a tcp header uses padding to ensure to let me just clear it up i hope you, you understood all these what we have here so i uh, before uh, actually uh, i say what padding here is let me okay let me take the options field we saw that options is of variable length okay now variable from 0 to 320 bits typically it since it's a 32 bit size so it would should be divisible by 32 the length of this field is determined by the data offset field there are different options that come across we call it uh, as option kind 
one byte option length one byte option data it's of variable field these are the parts that can come within this option field there will be like a flag a flag and the value the first flag being option kind the second being option length and the third one is option data that's of variable length the first one that I mentioned option kind field this indicates the type of option that you are going to use if you're using uh, the, among the options this is the only field that is not optional right let me repeat the first field in the options is option kind opton dash kind which is of one byte and what is the purpose of this option kind here option kind indicates what type of option are you using and this is the only field that is not optional now depending upon what kind of option you are dealing with the next two fields may be set the next field comes here we call it as option length okay what is option length it indicates the total length of the option field and the rest here is the third one that is option data that would contain the data the actual data that option is supposed to say maximum segment strength is how much put that in the data this would be applicable only if you want options among this only the first option is to be kept which is not optional okay this is fine optional field the next thing that comes after option you see here it is data but actually it is not so there is something which comes between data and option which I have drawn here in red and what is this this is known as padding P A D D I N G so the TCP header padding is used to ensure that the TCP header ends and the data begins so it's a 32 bit boundary that will come across here which says that header is finished now after this what is coming the data is supposed to come and what is within padding what is the padding composed of the padding here I'll write here P A D D I N G. So, what is this padding? It's a boundary. What is the boundary between? It's a boundary between two things the header part and the data part. It separates the two. It's a 32 bit boundary, and what is the value of this? It's zeros. All zeros. And what would the receiver understand with this padding? It would understand that these 32 bits indicate the end of the header part and whatever I am getting after it is basically the data this is the actual data that's supposed to receive okay Ramanand I think I'll stop here alright is there any question everybody Any question? Then I think there was problem from your end that you didn't have voice. I saw your message late. For uh, us, uh, for Ramananda, it was working fine. So I believe others would have as well. Ramananda, you are taking attendance regularly. Good job. It's fine. Send me and keep uh, taking attendance as well regularly. And by now you would understand attendance uh, really helps, right, Ramanand? <laughs> okay. All right. Another another thing is um, the assignment. So I have given the third assignment. The last date supposed to be uh, Ramanand when? Okay, day after tomorrow, is it? Fourth. Okay, fifth June. Now, as okay, fine. It's fifth June. So this week I won't give any assignment. 
next week i'll give assignment once we have five assignments i'll stop we'll keep a target of five assignments all right keep in mind assignments are all covered within our syllabus including if i send some extra videos for you to uh, learn from let it be uh, 5th june that is fine i have given email addresses please send to the specific email addresses that i have sent so that there is no confusion okay by by uh, weeks or next week's time i'll send a confirmation of the email the assignments that i, I have received all right okay then i'll see you in the next class bye bye